Hey everybody, this is your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are starting with topic 1.1, the very first topic in all of AP Bio. Um, and we're going to be starting the first unit, which is called Chemistry of Life, but our first topic for this unit, and there are six topics of this unit, is called Structure of Water and Hydrogen Bonding. So we're going to be reviewing a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of physical science when it um, comes to, well, water, because water is an essential component of all living things. In fact, let's get started. Most organisms in their environments are all made of water. Your body mass, you're about two-thirds water. Most of your organs are mostly water. It's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of water. And it's extremely important because you die in a few minutes without having that much water. Um, the thing about water is that it has unique properties in comparison to other molecules, meaning that water is kind of weird um, in comparison to, say, other nonpolar. Well, I just kind of spoiler gave it away there in order in comparison to other types of liquids or solids or gases because you know water can be all three at a reasonable temperature um, so let's get into why water is so unique and why it's exactly it's so important this is going to be the first topic again of all of AP bio here all right so as I kind of alluded to before water's shape makes it what's called polar and polar means that just generally anything that's polar has two different sides to it Okay, so water itself, a glass of water isn't going to have two different sides to it, but the water molecule is. What we're getting down to here is the, yeah, the molecular level. In one drop of water, you're going to have billions and billions of water molecules. They're extremely small, and they're only made of three atoms. And if you remember them correctly, water is H2O, right? So we got two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom that makes up each water molecule, H2O. All right, and the fact that it is made of two hydrogens and one oxygen, and they're kind of arranged in this Mickey Mouse shape, gives it its polar properties here. So check it out. Hydrogen has what's called a high electronegativity, and oxygen has a, what's called a low electronegativity. Um, so it, what ends up happening is that on one side of the water molecule, there's a slight positive charge, and on the other side of the water molecule, it's a slight negative charge. So it's almost like little tiny magnets um, that are interacting with each other. So it's partially positive on one side, partially negative on the other. And that's what makes it polar. Other molecules that are nonpolar don't have an uneven distribution of charge. They're like evenly charged all over the place. So water molecules are special in comparison to other molecules just on account of the fact that it's polar, positive and negative. And the fact that it's positive and negative allows, I'm going to move myself over here, allows water to form hydrogen bonds. And hydrogen bonds are attractions between different water molecules. Now, you may have learned, oop, my highlight got a little messed up there. Um, you may have learned about different types of bonds in a chemistry class. You talked about covalent bonds, ionic bonds, metallic bonds, maybe perhaps. Um, and hydrogen bonds aren't necessarily bonds. Those other bonds that I just listed are bonds that are um, holding atoms together within one compound or within one molecule. Hydrogen bonds are a little different because they're more like interactions between molecules themselves. Okay, so check out this picture here. Um, this picture is showing hydrogen bonds between these water molecules. And what they are is they're just attractions between these water molecules. Okay, so remember how I was saying that one side is negative and the other side is positive on each individual water molecule? Check it out. Opposites attract, right? Positive attracts this negative part of the oxygen, or excuse me, of this water molecule, and this negative part attracts that positive part of the another water molecule. Okay, so these are uh, so these sides of these water molecules are constantly attracting and repelling each other, and they're constantly forming these bonds and breaking them an unbelievable amount of times, and like an infinite number of times, any second in any amounts of water. Okay, so these hydrogen bonds, they keep forming, rebreaking, forming, rebreaking, because, you know, water flows. Water, you know, when it's in the liquid form or a gas form, it flows, okay? So all of these um, water molecules are constantly interacting with each other and forming what are called hydrogen bonds, and these can become very, very strong in some cases um, because they are so frequent. If you have a lot of bonds happening at the same time, it becomes pretty strong, okay? Um, so, these hydrogen bonds, 
then water's ability to form hydrogen bonds gives it its unique properties. And we're, there's a lot of unique properties of water in comparison to other uh, compounds, but we're going to talk about three today, and those are cohesion, adhesion, and surface tension. So we're going to get into that here. Uh, cohesion, okay? Cohesion is um, the property of which water molecules stick to each other due to their hydrogen bonding. Let me just adjust that. There we go. Um, so, like we were saying before, these water molecules themselves, because of their positive and negative ends, they tend to attract to each other, pull away, attract to each other. Okay, but the fact is that all of these hydrogen bonds that are forming make water kind of tend to stick together. Okay, so water tends to form droplets like this. And if you've ever seen, you know, a wet surface before, you may have seen water kind of like clumping together and forming bigger drops before. That's because of water's hydrogen bonds and water's polarity. It's pretty amazing. So water is sticky. Okay, you don't think of it normally as, normally as sticky unless it's, you know, got a bunch of sugar in it, but water is, is it's sticky. It clings to things because of these uh, hydrogen bonds and its polarity. Um, similar to cohesion is adhesion and wa how water molecules stick to polar surfaces. Okay, so adhesion, um, an adjective that would describe adhesion is that water is adhesive, like tape. Tape is adhesive. It sticks to things, right? and water is cohesive, which means it sticks to itself, right? So adhesion has to do with water molecules sticking to polar surfaces, okay? So this, uh, this little cactus bud here, it's adhesive, um, and it has some kind of surface on it that is polar, in, or, it's, or it's polar or it's charged, and it allows water to stick to it. And that's gonna become really important for plants. I'm gonna show you here in a minute. Um, so water can stick to itself, and it can stick to other polar surfaces very, very easily because of these hydrogen bonds and because of its polarity. All right, so here's, uh, here's the practical application here of adhesion. Water stickiness allows trees and other plants to transport it upward from the ground. Have you ever thought about how a tree is able to bring water against gravity all the way up from the ground to the very, very tops of trees? There's trees that are like hundreds of feet tall, like a California redwood. How is that able to bring water all the way up against gravity? I mean, you try. You try lifting water that high. Well, I mean, it's not that bad, but still, a tree is able to do it because of water's adhesive properties, okay? Water is able to cohere to each other. They're able to stick to each other. So um, once water evaporates out of the leaves, you know, due to, to sunlight or transpiration, right, um, Water is able to move up through what are called the xylem, made up of water conducting cells in a tree um, because they're able to stick together and pull the other water molecules along, but it's also able to adhere to the walls of these uh, water conducting cells. They're a polar surface so water can stick to it as it moves up and it doesn't fall back down into the ground. It's pretty amazing actually. So water is able to go whoop because of this cohesion and adhesion. All right, one last property that I would like to discuss um, with you before we end this video here is surface tension. And you may have seen a water strider like this before, or there's other animals that are able to, to glide on the surface of water. Um, and that's because of water's property of surface tension. And surface tension is a measure of how difficult it is to stretch or break the surface of a liquid. Um, so this water strider is able to sit on the surface of the water because the force that it's putting down on the water is not strong enough to break the hydrogen bonds between all of these water molecules on the surface of the water. It's pretty amazing. Okay, so if you see in an action movie a guy jumping out of a helicopter and he lands safely in the water without a parachute or anything, that's, that's a bunch of crap. <laughs> because water's surface tension is going to, it's going to have a pretty serious force and it's going to have a pretty serious impact. Okay, so it's not like you can just go whoop and you can, you know, jump in your water and be safe because of water has surface tension and those hydrogen bonds between those water molecules keep that surface intact and it's a, and water has a very high surface tension um, in comparison to other liquids. All right, so all three of these, cohesion, adhesion, and surface tension, can all be attributed to the fact that water molecules form hydrogen bonds, and water molecules form hydrogen bonds because of the fact that each individual water molecule is polar, meaning it has a positive side to it and a negative side to it because of the positioning of those atoms, right? So, once again, form meets 
form meets func function here. Um, you would think that uh, the properties of big bodies of water doesn't have to do with literally the atomic level, but it absolutely does. And I believe that's it. Yep, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time for 1.2.